So there's this story that's told about this art professor, and apparently he was like a really world-renowned art professor. And so people from all over the world would come just to sit in on his classes. So the first thing he would do with his students is he would have them uh, sit down in a chair and stare at an object. And with a piece of paper, they would have to sit there and they would have to write down everything that they could observe about that object. And so at first, you know, everyone's scribbling down thoughts. They got a bunch of different ideas. After about a half an hour, they're starting to run out of steam. And so it's, the, the ideas are a little more sporadic. After an hour, uh, it's even less so. After three hours, everyone's just staring there bored. So the next day they come back to the class and they're excited because now hopefully they're gonna learn art. And the art teacher has them do the exact same thing, stare at the exact same object for another three hours. The same thing happens the next day, the next day, and for the entire week, they just sit and stare at this one object. So finally the students are getting kind of frustrated, right? So they go to the art professor and they say, listen, we've already seen everything there is to see. When can we start painting? And the art professor looked at them and he said to them, good artists see. He said, but only the great artists can observe. And, and what he was teaching them is he was teaching them the importance of observation, of observation. Sherlock Holmes said it this way. He said, the world is full of obvious things which nobody by any chance ever observes. And so as we're talking about how to study your Bible, um, we would say that there's really three steps to studying your Bible. The first step, which is what we're going to talk about in this session, is observation. Observation basically is concerned with what does the passage say? What does the passage of Scripture say? Uh, the second one is interpretation. Interpretation is what does the passage mean? And then the third is application, which is what do I need to change as a result of uh, this passage? So again, in this session we're dealing with observation. What does the passage mean? say. So with the person you're with or with the group you're with, um, on this web page, if you go, uh, you can download uh, a resource. It is an observation worksheet and our hope is that uh, you can work through that together after watching this session. So, so get that uh, worksheet. Let me kind of walk you through the steps and explain it and then after we're done uh, you can take some time and go through it with the person or with the group that you're with. So, so here's the steps to observation. All right, step number one is this. Begin with prayer. All right, start by praying. Again, with the person you're with or with the group you're with, take some time and, and pray to God. Now remember, we said that the, the goal of studying our Bible is to know Jesus and love Jesus and love others more. And so if that's the case, uh, it makes so much sense to start by asking God, uh, you know, teach me, show me, reveal yourself to me as we go through this. So I can't stress it enough. Start with prayer. Start uh, by praying uh, before you, you jump into the Bible. All right, here's step two. Step two is this. Read and reread the passage read and reread. Whatever passage it is that you're going through, read and reread it. I would say this, read it in multiple translations, all right? My, pre my preference and what I would recommend to you is to read it in at least three different translations. Uh, there's a, a resource you can use called a parallel Bible, and a parallel Bible will contrast the different verses for you, uh, or you could just use your phone or whatever, but I would say access at least three different translations, and then jot down any observations that you have initially about the passage. Right? So that's step two. Read and reread the passage in different translations and jot down some observations. Here's step three, all right? And this one might be hard for some of you. Try to forget everything that you've ever learned about this passage in the past. Okay, so maybe for you, like you've heard a bunch of sermons on this passage, or maybe for you, you know, you've, you've read this before and you've done some study on it. It is really important to try to forget everything that you heard so that you can come to the passage with a fresh set of eyes that you can observe things that you haven't seen before and that you can really dig into it on that level. So step three is to try to forget everything that you've ever heard or you've learned about this passage before. Here's step four. Step four is to identify the immediate context. Here's what I mean by that. What came before this passage and what came after, right? And the best way to do that is probably just to read a couple paragraphs before uh, the passage and a couple paragraphs after. Try to frame it up. How does this fit in to the narrative of, of the passage and the rest of the book that you're reading. So try to identify the immediate context. Here's step five, all right? Step five is this, try to summarize it in your own words. So, so, so in this step, what you wanna do is you wanna go through the passage, go paragraph by paragraph, and try to summarize each paragraph in your own words. Now, this is so important, and I believe that this is so key to comprehension, because there is something about uh, taking, uh, reading something, and then filtering it through your brain and then trying to verbalize it in your own words that increases comprehension. So this is a, a really key part, I believe, of observation. So take some time, summarize it in your own words. 
Here's step six. All right, step six is interrogate the text. Interrogate the text. I like that term. You think about like a police interrogation room, right? You put someone under the light. You're like, where were you the night of September 2nd, blah, 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 right? So, so I want you to, to, to interrogate the text. And what I mean is drill it with questions. Ask as many questions as you can imagine. Ask the basic questions, the who, what, where, when, why, how, right? Who, um, what names show up in this passage? Uh, are there specific people that are addressed? Does a, the, the, are there he's and she's? Who do those refer to, the he's and she's? So ask who, ask what. Right? What, are the, what are the key things that are happening? Uh, what are the major thoughts that are being communicated through this passage? Talk about what are there major events that are happening. Ask when. Uh, when was it written? Are there certain references to time that you see in this passage? I mean, just interrogate the text and go through, ask those questions, who, what, when, where, and why. And I would say this. I would say ask any question that comes to your mind. Now, I should probably say this. I should probably, probably just uh, warn you in advance that there's going to be a lot of questions that you may not find the answer to, and there's going to be a lot of questions that you may never find the answer to. But that's okay, because at this point, you're not really trying to find answers. You're just asking all the questions. And I'd even encourage you to do this. Ask the tough questions. I know sometimes um, we'll go through the Bible, and there's really difficult questions that come up that sometimes we're afraid to ask. Ask them. Because as we get into interpretation and we get into application, you'll see how those can be beneficial to us as we continue to study. So step six is interrogate the text. Step seven is this, identify the main point. Identify the main point. And, and, and what I'd ask you to do in this step with the person you're with or with the group that you're with is to write down in one sentence, try to summarize in one sentence, what you believe the main point of this passage is. And listen, this is gonna be very, very difficult. Uh, but I believe, once again, there is so much value to trying to condense things down to one simple sentence to say this is really what this passage is talking about. It'll be beneficial for you. It'll be beneficial uh, for the people that you're with. And then again, it will increase comprehension. All right, so summarize it in your own words. Step eight is this, uh, end with prayer. After you're done in this session and, and, and with the people you're grouped with, once again, pray. Ask God that as you continue to study this passage, that he would reveal himself to you, uh, that he would teach you more about his son Jesus and teach you more about his heart. Um, so let me give you a couple last thoughts before, before you jump into this. A couple last thoughts are this. I can't stress um, the importance of the step of observation. Uh, this is a step that is so frequently just skipped right over and is completely ignored. But there is so much value in, in working on observation. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't stress that enough, and I'm shocked sometimes when, when, I, when I go through observation how much the Holy Spirit works in just, in just looking at a passage and, and picking it apart and just observing and observing and observing. And so take some time. Um, I would challenge you not to just go through it flippantly, but really take some time and look and observe and ask God prayerfully to help reveal and show you things. Um, in that passage of scripture. So once again, I would tell you, uh, with the person you're with or with the group you're with, take some time after this session, work through that observation worksheet with them and, uh, and look at this passage together. The next session, we'll talk about the next step, interpretation.